Well, good morning, everyone. I would like to call to order the uh, the August Monday, August tenth, uh, RTD Accountability Committee. The the first one of uh, of I'm sure will be many conversations that we have regarding this committee. Um, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Doug Rex. I'm the executive director of the Denver Regional Council of Governments, or probably more commonly referred to as Dr. Cog, which is the best name and best acronym in the business, by the way. Um, <laughs> But uh, it's real pleasure to see everybody, and uh, we are delighted to be able to participate in, in this endeavor as we go forth. Um, we think we all have a lot of really, really good conversations, and uh, we are here. Uh, we have selected and agreed to, to house and, and staff this committee. Um, but a couple little um, uh, just little book, um, housekeeping stuff before we begin. Um, I think it would be great. Well, first of all, if, if you're not currently speaking, please mute. Your, your computers, that would help with the feedback noise. And also, um, if possible, if you have access, we would like you to have your video on, um, at a minimum, um, your video on while you are speaking. Um, I, me, like I'm sure many of the, the members of the committee are not familiar with, with all the faces of, on the committee thus far. And it would be nice in this virtual environment just to be able to see everybody put a, put a face with a name. So thank you all very much. Um, so with if you haven't noticed already, with the committee's permission, I, I'll, I'll be leaving this meeting until such time that we have uh, a chair and vice chair, which is a little further down on the agenda. Um, and I'm not seeing any head shakes or not, uh, so I'll, I'll just I'll just go ahead and, and get going with uh, with the first item, which is introductions. Um, I would like first, before we get introductions of the members, to um, uh, to just recognize the. Uh, Dr. Cog's staff that will be participating in this endeavor. Um, we have uh, Ron Papsdorf, and I don't know if Ron, you have your video you can pop on real quick. Ron Papsdorf is our Transportation Planning and Operations Director at Dr. Cog. Ron, you wave there. And Matthew Helfand, which will be kind of the face of, of this endeavor. He'll be the lead staff member for us. And uh, he's, he's the only one in the office this morning by the looks of it. Matthew, wave back there. There he is. So we're again, we're really excited about the opportunity, and we thank you for the confidence that um, the governor, as well as uh, Senator Winter, and uh, Representative Gray, as well as RTD, had in our ability to do so. So thank you all very much. So what I might do now, for, as far as introductions, and introductions are always tough in this environment, right? Is um, instead of everybody just talking over the top of everybody, what I might do is just go through the roster, and those that are present, just please, you know, just um, just just briefly just um, introduce yourself and maybe quickly why you had an interest in, in this committee. So I will start with, uh, with the, the five governor appointments that were made as part of this committee. And I, the first one is uh, Dea Zavala. I don't see Dea here right now. Okay, we'll move on. Uh, the next one is Sophie Schul Schulman the urban with urban planning expertise. Sophie. Hi, uh, Sophie Schulman. I lead the Office of Innovative Mobility at CDOT, which includes our Division of Transit and Rail. So that includes a lot of our capital investments and things like multimodal hubs, as well as you know supporting our transit agencies around the state. So obviously, RTD is a key element of that, and I'm excited for the the conversation that we're going to have over the next several months. Thank you, Sophie, very much. Uh, um, economic, yes, sir. They, I just got a text from the governor's office. The governor's waiting to be let into the meeting. Oh, so we want to just go ahead and and, <laughs> and let's bring bring the governor in to give his welcome, and uh, we can get, we can hit introductions after that. Once and once Senator Senator Winter and uh, and uh, Representative Gray have an opportunity to welcome too. So yeah, could someone want to bring the governor in? Hi, Doug. This is Melinda. Um, to be honest, I'm not exactly sure what's preventing them from getting in. Because uh, most people should have been able to just click on the link and then launch the, the program, unless someone else ran into this and I'm I'm off base. The text says it's Sam from the governor's office waiting for waiting to be let in. Is there anybody? I don't see anyone under that name. I'm so sorry, guys. I, I just, I have no idea. Are, I, are we sure we're, they're on the right platform? I hope so. They have all the information. 
I have a phone number too. Matthew, why don't you mute your computer and figure that out? All right. All right, that'd be good. And we'll we'll continue on with uh, introductions until such time that we can get the governor in. Um, the uh, gentleman with economic development expertise as part of the, the appointees was Chris Frampton. Is Chris Chris on the line? You, I'm, oh. Can't hear you, Chris. There, how's that? There you go. Hi guys, Chris Frampton. Um, I work at East West Partners and I am, um, we were very involved with the Union Station project and <clears throat> happy to be here. Excited about this, it'll be fun. Great, thank you, Chris, very much. Uh, the governor appointee with financial planning expertise, Rod Bridges. Uh, hi, Doug, uh, good to see you again. Uh, I, I uh, have worked on some issues related to this for some time going back to uh, the mobility choice efforts that Doug and I worked together on. But um, I'm certainly very interested in the challenges that we're facing right now, uh, and RTD is facing, and I think it's gonna be an interesting process to try to sort it all out. And uh, my background is I've written a couple of books related to autonomous vehicles and electric vehicles and how uh, roles that they might play in this process. Thanks. Great. Thank you very much, sir. Day uh, came in, I noticed. Yeah, I thought Daya is there now. So our governor appoint, appointee with transportation equity expertise. Daya, go ahead. Hi, everyone. Hi, Doug. For whatever reason, while you were calling my name, I, my unmute went back to mute. So I apologize. <laughs> um, but hi, everyone. My name is Daya Zavala. I'm the executive director of Mile High Connects. Uh, we are a regional collaborative that's been working on transportation issues um, and has been working with RTD now for quite some time. And so I look forward to contributing. Great, thank you, Dave, very much. Uh, our next one, uh, governor appointee is a representative of local government, and that is uh, Commissioner Elise Jones. Good morning, everyone. Hi, Doug. Um, I'm a Boulder County Commissioner and a uh, longtime interest in RTD since uh, working to help pass fast tracks in 2004. My uh, region is particularly interested in RTD because we love transit and we're also trying to complete fast tracks up here as well. Great, thank you, Elise, very much. So those are the five governor appointees. Um, we also have six that were appointed uh, in, in, uh, jointly by, by Representative Gray and Senator Winter. And the, the first three are representatives of local government. The first one is Council Member Crystal Maria, I'm sorry if I butchered that your name, um, but it's kind of a running joke at Dr. Cog. I butcher everybody's name, so I hope I didn't do too bad. <laughs> uh, no, uh, I appreciate the effort. I <laughs> often get m mispronounced last names. It's Murillo in Spanish. Uh, so hello everyone, my name is Crystal Murillo. I'm so happy to be with you all. I am a city council member for um, Ward 1 in Aurora, which is um, kind of the northwest part. We have the Colfax Corridor, the Stanley Marketplace, uh, right next to Lowry and including the Anschutz Medical Campus. Um, the median income in my district is 30,000, 60% are renters, and more than any other par part of Aurora, my constituents rely on public transit as a means to get to their jobs. So a uh, very hardworking, diverse community. Uh, as you know, one in five in Aurora are foreign born. So I'm very, very thankful to be here and, and be able to give that advocacy. Thank you, council member, very much. Our next local government representative is Mayor Jackie Millay. Good morning, everyone. And uh, Crystal, I pronounced my name wrong for the longest time too. I'm gonna say, and he did it right this time, obviously. He's known me for a long time. Yeah, I chaired, I chaired Dr. Cog for a bit, but I get millet, as you can imagine, all the time. So it is Malay. Uh, I uh, am honored to serve as the mayor of the city of Lone Tree. I've been involved in local government now for um, over 12 years. And uh, the city was uh, very excited to actually open up three new light rail stations uh, last May, it seems so long ago. I'm a civil engineer by profession. <clears throat> One of the priorities I had when I joined council was a robust, multimodal transportation system in the city of Lone Tree. We've been very excited to execute on that, including um, our great partnership with RTD, but also 
uh, expansion of intracity transit um, that we fund in our own community in addition to multimodal uh, assets um, and, and expansion of our roads and, and the freeway system as well. So um, I feel very strongly that uh, one of the reasons we're successful in the Denver metro region is the access to transit. I think it's really important to provide opportunity to people, connect people to jobs, work, um, and school. And I'm um, looking forward to working with all of you. So thank you. Great. Thank you, Mayor, very, very much. Our uh, last local government appointee was Julie Duran Mullica. Good morning, Julie. Hi, everybody. How are you doing? Can you hear me fine? Awesome. So my name is Julie. I'm a Northland City Council member. Um, and I've been privilege, I guess, to be part of this transportation conversation for quite a while, especially here up here in the north. Um, we are finally getting our first um, light rail station, so we're very excited about that starting in September. Um, the end line is going to be opening um, right near us. So up here in the north, we're really concerned about our access and our equity. Um, and so I'm really happy to be able to bring that conversation to this table. Thanks, guys. Great. Thank you, Council Member, very, very much. Um, Human resource expertise, Kathy Nesbitt. Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm Kathy Nesbitt, and I have spent the majority of my career as an employment attorney. Um, I have worked in both public, private, uh, and government entities. I um, served in Governor Hickenlooper's cabinet, ran DPA, and now I am the vice president of administration for the University of Colorado. Happy to be here and share any expertise that I have can, to help us reach a successful outcome. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy, and welcome. Uh, our next appointee is multimodal expertise and Dan Blankenship. Good morning, Dan. Good morning, everyone. Um, happy to be here. Uh, I've served as the CEO of the Roaring Fork Transportation Authority uh, for approximately 31 years. We're the largest rural transit uh, system in the United States. Uh, I think we're about the second largest transit system in the state of Colorado. Uh, and we're the first uh, rural transit system that's <clears throat> implemented a bus rapid transit system. RTD has always been a tremendous resource for RAFTA and for uh, transit agencies throughout the state. Uh, we really look to them as a role model and, uh, you know, I'm honored to be able to serve on this committee and, and try to provide uh, some constructive insights about uh, what, it, what it means to operate regional transportation. Uh, RTD doors rafted by an order of probably 20 or 30 uh, in, in size and scale and scope. Uh, and I hope to learn some things that I can bring back uh, to the Roaring Fork Valley and uh, help to improve our system. Uh, it's a pleasure meeting you all, and I look forward to working with you. Great, Dan. Thank you, sir, very much. Our uh, last appointee is expertise on issues facing transit riders with disabilities, and Kristen Trustman. Good morning, Good morning everyone. I am thrilled to be a part of this. Uh, starting in 2013, I was using Accessoride and noticed all sorts of deficits and didn't know what to do. And someone said, oh, there's this thing called APAC, the ADA Paratransit Advisory Committee that RTD has appointed. And so since 2013, I have been either officially or unofficially a part of APAC. Unfortunately, APAC is kind of a for show sort of thing. And I don't think we got a damn thing done in those six years and it was very frustrating to me. I also have worked with uh, multiple other people, other, other groups here in town, Dr. Mack, um, Mile High Connects, to really improve the sort of services that are provided for people who are disabled in one way or another. And I believe that I can really add a different angle on things, a necessary angle. I'm ecstatic to be a part of this group. Great. Thank you, Kristen, so, so very, very much. Um, and that takes us, I think that is everyone. Um, I did notice that uh, um, that 
the Governor Polis is on the line now. I know we have some RTD representatives as well that are that are on the call, and maybe we'll get to those right after the welcomes. Um, but I don't know how much time the governor actually had. But so I'll I'll welcome him and ask him to make some opening remarks. Good morning, uh, good good morning, Governor Polis. Thank you. Is are you able to hear me? Okay. Yes, sir. Good. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining us. It was great to see um, those introductions. You each bring a very valuable perspective uh, to these proceedings. And first of all, I want to thank everybody that helped work to lead up to these proceedings. And that includes uh, Senator Winter and Representative Gray, both of whom are on the line, as well as RTD Board Chair Angie Rivera. So I see her as well. Uh, also, by the way, she led the RTD Board in a unanimous vote uh, for this process. So I want to thank all of those uh, stakeholders as well as well as Douglas Rex and Dr. Cog for hosting this committee. So uh, really, really uh, showed some great foresight in, in, in trying to get ahead of this and, and really uh, looking at the systemic reform from the ground up. This is the beginning of a really urgent and important and necessary process uh, for RTD and of course more broadly for uh, transit uh, in the Denver metro area of which RTD is the biggest part. Um, not necessarily the only part. Um, our state, as you know, has been growing quite a bit uh, because it's a great place to live. We have a great business climate. Uh, people want to move here. Uh, and uh, we've had increases in population, which have led to, uh, of course, uh, frustrations of people being stuck in traffic, loss of productivity, uh, increase in housing prices as uh, people struggle to live within community distance of where their jobs are. So in order to really meet the challenges of the future, and that means our economic growth challenges, our demographic growth challenges, and our climate challenges, and our air quality challenges, uh, we need to really think what in RTD and more broadly uh, transit looks like uh, for the future of the Denver metro area. It's um, not easy to design and implement and, and run a system serving millions of people uh, every day in a population base of over 3 million people. So this is really a, a challenge, of course. It's an opportunity to reimagine our transportation, reimagine what the role is of RTD in that, uh, how we can better serve residents, commuters, tourists, businesses, really everybody who is impacted by RTD and transit-oriented solutions um, in the Denver metro area. And that's why uh, we've picked and tapped all of you. I'm confident that your wisdom, uh, your foresight will guide this process really uh, to meet the prescribed goals uh, in, in the document to provide tangible guidance for RTD that they will then have a up or down vote on to help improve the way that they deliver mobility. It can also include recommendations for the legislature and the governor to contribute to a future where multimodal mobility options really serve the needs of, of people across our metropolitan area. Uh, and of course, leverage intellect and diverse perspectives that we have uh, by working collaboratively. I think there's both a financial and an operational challenge. I mean, financially, um, what, it, what, what does it make sense financially for RTD? Is, should there be some kind of uh, asset sale or bankruptcy or continue it as it is or uh, what I, you know, there's no preconceived notions from, from a financial engineering perspective. What makes sense? It's my understanding most of the enormous sums of money that are generated every year uh, go to servicing debt, which is never never a good situation to be in. Um, if that was somehow freed up for other things, that would be uh, that would help meet the needs of the area. And then operationally, um, how do you think uh, broadly in terms of linkage with other transit systems? Uh, housing, uh, transit-oriented development uh, in areas that, that make sense where people can afford to live and get to their good jobs. Uh, and operationally, how can we reduce costs and be more efficient at, at moving at moving people, uh, moving a greater number of people at a lower cost, uh, while of course remaining true to commitments that RTD made to taxpayers um, in, in the Fast Tracks ballot initiative, uh, including the construction of Northwest Rail, which is already two years behind. Um, so I want to thank everybody on here for, for leading. Um, you're going to have some great ideas. Uh, really, what should a 21st century transportation system look like? The sky's the limit. There's nothing that should hold you back. Um, I mean, I think part of the charge is what, what should a 
uh, what should a transit governance system look like? How should it be integrated with municipalities, with counties? Should it be larger geographically? Should it be smaller geographically? Um, you know, should should uh, how do you how do you look at the different kinds of mass transit and the trends that emerge? How do you reduce the need for tra mass transit by having people have more affordability for housing closer to where jobs are, so they don't face the uh, difficulty of uh, having to make commuter choices? So, really, all of these things, and you're the very best group to focus on those. And it's my pleasure to introduce Matthew Helfant, the senior transportation planner for Dr. Cog, and we'll let the uh, uh, let your deliberations begin. Thank you so much. Great. Thank thank you, Governor, very, very much. Um, Matthew, what I might do before we start getting into the next is, um, seeing we're in this welcome phase right now, I might give uh, Senator Winter and Representative Gray an opportunity to, to just welcome the group. And then um, Angie, we'll probably turn it to you and you can introduce your ex officio members as well um, here in a minute. So Senator Winter, the floor is yours. Hi, everyone. It's so good to see you this morning. Um, and I am really look forward to the work that you all are going to be doing. Uh, just a brief history on kind of how we got here. Um, Representative Gray and I were working for about two years on some sort of legislation around accountability in RTD. And this came from a lot of different places. Um, the disability community was frustrated with RTD. We knew that in order to meet our climate goals, RTD had to be a strong partner. Um, numerous local governments were having um, difficult conversations with RTD that they thought could be going better. Um, RTD was having a hard time hiring and keeping drivers. At the same time, Amazon was able to hire drivers every single day, right? We had the low-income community. Um, I worked with RTD to get a low-income fare, and that took years to implement. Um, and so I've also been working with RTD, uh, much like Elise has since 2004. I still have my t-shirt from the Fast Tracks campaign that I wore collecting signatures for that. Um, and then I served in local government as well in the city of Westminster and then as an elected official at the state level. And we know that we need a really strong public transit system in the region and in the state for so many reasons. Um, and so my charge to you is, we brought together a diverse group of people that's geographically diverse, um, racially diverse, income diverse, um, diverse in experience and expertise, and to really treat this um, charge on the committee to be regional in nature and regional in focus. So you have your specific area of expertise, you have the specific area you live in, um, but really I want you to think regionally on how we can have the strongest public transit system uh, in the country. And I know we can do that, we can rise to that challenge. Um, and just like the governor said, think broadly. Um, if it takes legislation, if it takes uh, repositioning of how RTD works, um, think broadly, think creatively, and I just want to thank RTD because RTD worked really collaboratively to come to this process. Um, one of the first conversations actually that Representative Gray and I had was that <clears throat> Some folks thought RTD should no longer be an elected body. Um, and we didn't think that was the right solution and went to RTD and said, there are all these concerns um, that we want to address. We want to work with you. We want to work collaboratively with RTD in order to um, solve these issues. And so they came to the table in good faith and helped us develop both this um, committee and also a way for this committee to have real independence uh, for the recommendations that this committee makes that they have to publicly talk about, work on, and um, hopefully adopt. Uh, and so I want to thank RTD for actually coming to the table for this difficult conversation in a very collaborative way. Um, so I can't wait to see the work that you do. Um, and I know that we can uh, figure out how to create a strong transit system together. And so with that, I'm going to hand it over to Representative Matt Gray. Uh, thank you very much, Senator Winter, and thank you, Governor. Uh, my executive assistant is here with me uh, to help take notes and uh, um, echo just about what everybody else said. I mean, this is a really, really challenging moment um, for our team. Um, you know, with the new CEO coming in soon with significant financial challenges and coming off of, you know, sort of a 15, 16 year track of not being able to um, live up to a lot of the promises that have been made. Uh, some of that within the organization's control, uh, many that 
many of the factors that work within the organization's control. Um, but I think the goal of everyone, and I'm glad we're working on it collaboratively, is to rebuild trust in the system um, within the public. And I think that this is a really great team um, to do that. I think that having folks from the outside come and take a look in um, will both hopefully generate some new ideas, um, some things that haven't been thought about or tried before um, that can actually improve the system, but also just allow folks to see that, you know, some of the challenges that are going to be going to take a really long time to solve um, that you have some external validation for that and then come up with the best possible strategy to use the resources, um, you know, human, financial and otherwise uh, that the organization has. And so I, I mostly just want to say thank you to you all for joining this process, for volunteering your time uh, to better our community, um, for answering the call uh, when we called you and asked you to do this. So thank you so much um, for for all that you for stay, for stepping up and for all that you're going to do um, here in the coming weeks and months. So thank you so much. Great. Thank you, Representative Gray, and thank you, Senator Winter. Really do appreciate your efforts and time in this uh, collaboration. Um, next, I'll turn it to uh, Chair Angie Rivera Malpietti, uh, RTD Board Chair, to uh, introduce herself as well as her ex officio. Just so you know, Angie, uh, we are trying to bring Lynn in right now, so stay oh, tuned. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, well, good morning, everybody. And let me just start by saying bienvenidos a todos, which is welcome to everybody. I am so grateful on behalf of the RTD Board of Directors that you are coming together to work with us to take a deep dive into RTD. And as you may know or may not know, RTD is the 16th largest transit agency in the country, number one. Number two, we have the largest footprint geographically of 2,700 square miles. And so when you put that into the mix, it's pretty amazing uh, just how big we serve of an area that we serve. Our board is thrilled that you're going to be working with us. Um, the other thing I will let you know is that RTD is probably one of the most audited agencies in the state. And because we work with the FTA and the FRA, I think it's gonna be fascinating to me um, to see what you guys come up with. I'm thrilled about it. And um, I think that together, we're really gonna make an impact on this on this transit agency uh, regionally and nationally. So thank you. And with that, uh, if I might, I'd like to turn it over to um, our chair of, of government relations, Lynn Geisinger. Can you hear me? Yeah, we got yeah. you, Lynn. Oh, good. I don't I had troubles all morning, but I could hear it. Um, uh, I'm Lynn Geisinger. I'm the director from uh, District O, which is basically Western Boulder County and Louisville and Superior and those areas. And uh, I'm very excited to have this uh, committee kick off. Angie uh, Rivera Malpietti and, and others and I worked hard with um, uh, Senator Winter and Representative Gray and Governor Polis and his office. And we appreciate all their efforts to um, pull this together and, and do it in a, a joint a joint way. Um, we have some exciting news that I assume most of you heard is that we have named three finalists to um, choose our next CEO. All are women. Uh, three or uh, two of them are women of color. They look excellent. They are really excellent. And maybe during the other matters period, I could talk for a, a little bit about the public participation and how we hope you will help us uh, and give us feedback as we move forward. Thank you. Thank you, Lynn, very much. Troy, you want to make a few comments? Thank you very much, Doug. Uh, Troy Whitmore, Director, uh, District K from RTD. And uh, it's basically Adams County. It's the northeast corner of the uh, district that I represent, including Brighton Commerce City, uh, much of Thornton, and some unincorporated Adams County. Um, I am the Vice Chair of the Communications and Government uh, committee so work closely with uh, our chair uh, Lynn who just spoke and our main chair Angie and enjoy doing so um, I was elected about 18 months ago on much of a campaign doctrine that uh, a council member Mullica stated to you all um, you know we uh, we all feel like there's portions of our territory that deserve more and 
that's uh, kind of the the platform I ran on. Uh, my day job, I worked for electric utility company up in Adams County, and uh, I served many years ago on city council in Thorpe, so have been elected person uh, and very active in uh, civic and charitable organizations, including Energy Outreach Colorado, which is near and dear to my heart and, and near and dear to a lot of low-income folks in Colorado. So with that, uh, thank you, Doug, for the time. Great. Thank you, sir, very much. Good pleasure to see you this morning. Okay, that takes us through introductions, and uh, we always had the welcomes as well. Um, so it takes us to an informational briefing. So we just asked Matt, Matthew Helfant on our staff, just to briefly to do just an overview of the, the purpose and, and role of this committee. Um, and he has a brief PowerPoint that he's gonna go through. And we'll have time to probably begin to set some priorities about what we would like to look at as a group um, in, in, the, you know, in, the early, in the early days of this committee. But, um, but I'll ask Matthew if he wanted to go ahead and, and uh, give his presentation. Doug, is the, is the PowerPoint coming up? Uh, nope, not yet. Could you, I guess I'm having technical difficulties. Can you bring it up on the, um, just from the, the agenda? Melinda, I think that was a question for you. I hope so. <laughs> yes, I will bring it up right now. Okay, thank, thank you. you. All right, well, um, good morning, everybody. Uh, I'd like to thank the governor and um, Representative uh, Gray and uh, Senator, um, crap, this isn't my morning. But anyway, I'd like to thank everyone for, <laughs> I, I'd like to thank everyone uh, for participating and making remarks. Um, so I uh, just want to go through a quick overview of, um, of the committee. Most of you have seen all of this. So next slide. Uh, this is just the membership. And um, you, you've seen this. We, we, we went through this with introductions. Uh, so next, the mission. And so the key here is uh, you can all see the, the, the mission there. Uh, we're, we're here to provide guidance to RTD to better serve our community. And uh, overarching goals, and, and these are staff overarching goals, and, and certainly open to interpretation, open to a conversation by the committee, but just thought we'd, this is a good starting place. Uh, provide constructive, tangible guidance for RTD that will help them improve the way they deliver vital mobility for our community, uh, contribute to a future for the Denver region, where there are multimodal options, uh, mobility options that serve the needs of all people, regardless of income or abilities. Uh, review each of the committee responsibilities and form subgroups and engage others when necessary and or appropriate to formulate concrete recommendations. And uh, leveraging the experience, intellect, and diverse perspectives that we have here today. Uh, certainly, uh, hearing all the backgrounds from all of you uh, we have a great committee here, and we look forward to working collaboratively to find solutions. So on the next slide, um, review. Uh, these are just, th this comes directly from, um, from the documents that, that, uh, that, that form this committee, uh, but, um, you know, financials, uh, the governance structure, uh, short-term and long-term prioritization of resources, Next slide. Uh, and then how RTD can better serve all riders. And, and you can see the list down there. Uh, of, um, so uh, we want to have a, a, a comprehensive review uh, for the entire community and determining long range financial stability, uh, which is incredibly important. Uh, some topics to consider uh, partnerships with local governments. Uh, the use of, of CARES Act that came from the federal government, uh, ADA compliance and accessibility, uh, that's come up several times this morning. Uh, that's incredibly important. Um, and then equity. 
and, and, and there are several ways uh, that we can look at equity and, and we should look at equity. And um, an organizational assessment, uh, financial health, uh, that's also come, the governor talked about that, uh, human resources, uh, work culture, management and governance, um, and then uh, services plans and criteria for expansions or reductions in service that's also come up this morning. Um, we'll look at the audit uh, and, and uh, that'll include uh, staff management and retention. Um, and then the district's efforts to um, address uh, climate uh, change goals, which has also come up this morning, and uh, the district's role in fostering economic development. And next is a timeline uh, to, uh, to show you what's going on moving forward. Uh, next slide. So um, we, have a, uh, we have the option to issue a preliminary report at the end of this year if we're ready. Uh, also, um, our, our, our recommendations are due on July 1st of next year. And within uh, 45 days of the issuance of that report, RTD must either adopt the recommendations or um, issue a report stating the reasons for not adopting any specific recommendations. And uh, July 31st of next year marks the end. Uh, but as a committee, we may decide uh, that we need to continue the work. And uh, next slide. And with that, uh, I'd like to open it up if there are any questions or discussion. Great, thank you, Matthew, very much. Um, would ask the committee if they have any questions or comments about what their what our role and purpose is, um, or anything specifically that that Matthew brought up today. Just if you do have a question, um, you can either raise your hand and hopefully I'll see you. If not, just feel free to just shout it out. Commissioner Jones. Uh, thanks, Doug. I, so I have a whole uh, number of comments and potentially questions, but I think one of the biggest ones is figuring out what this committee's relationship is with the Reimagine RTD effort. Um, that, for those of you who aren't directly involved with that, and a number of you are, that effort is underway and moving quickly and potentially making decisions that sort of limit the options of this committee. And I don't know if it's possible to slow that down somewhat to sort of better align the timing, but I do think we need to really explicitly define and understand um, how these two efforts are gonna work together. Thank you, Commissioner, very much. Um, Lynn or Troy, I, I don't know if, I, I, I know there was discussion about the Reimagine RTD initiative at your last uh, committee uh, meetings, maybe last week. Um, just wonder if you had a comment on that. Well, sure. I'll let Lynn go jump in. Oh, go ahead, Lynn. Go um, ahead. I, the meeting last week, the the board uh, majority of the board expressed the same concern that we're moving too quickly. Um, the there is a plan to do a short term service change through Reimagine um, that would go into effect in January, which means it comes to the board in September, and uh, then they're also looking at longer term changes. Which is which are very up in the air, of course, because it's all about when people come back to riding the bus and and the train. Um, I think that this is um, we're right in the middle of this conversation. Uh, uh, it will be coming back up in the next couple of weeks and, and over the next couple of weeks. So it, uh, I think whatever concerns the committee has are timely because um, we've been, we've been sharing some of those. Thanks. Thank you, Director. Well, Karen, well, I guess I would just like to put that on the agenda because I do think that that's pretty fundamental and I worry a little bit about the system optimization plan that, that Reimagine is um, asking the RTD board to adopt for January. If that ends up lo locking in um, longer term decisions by default, um, I think that, that, that really limits this committee. So I do, I wanna put that on our, our agenda if we can. And then I yes. guess I would add one more comment um, is uh, to, we talked about climate um, goals and how this um, RTD's system plays a very important role with climate goals, given that transportation emissions are now the top 
um, source of uh, greenhouse gas pollutants. But uh, I would also wonder if we could expand that to include air pollution. We are out of serious, we're in serious non-attainment for ozone in the metro region, which has um, serious public health impacts, particularly for disproportionately impacted communities are already suffering. That is exacerbated by COVID. And in July, the week of July 11th, we had ozone levels that now put us in range of severe non-attainment. So I think that's a, a key piece of this as well. Thank you, Commissioner. Yes, we will, we'll make sure to ha have those items on a, on a future agenda. Any other comments or questions about role and purpose? Um, this Crystal, is yes. Councilmember Murillo, yes. So uh, correct me if this isn't the right time to inquire more on um, what, so I'm interested in getting some more context of what this time commitment looks like, what are our procedures, what are the role of the chair and the vice chair? I think, I know part of our charge today is to um, appoint both of those positions, but I think before we can have that conversation, having a better sense of what that commitment looks like, how they work together, what is the structure of this committee, is that all up for us to decide? But if we could talk about that, that um, is top of mind for me. And I also wanna echo, uh, what Elise uh, mentioned about including air quality um, for disparate impacts on marginalized communities. Councilmember, thank you very much. Yeah, I, I, I might just speak to, um, you know, kind of the structure and framework of the committee and, and time commitment and all that kind of good stuff. Um, it really is up to this committee. Um, we were not giving, uh, well, I guess we were given a lot of latitude in what we want that to look like. Um, so it's really up to this committee how often you want to meet. We're, we're here willing and able to meet whenever you would like to meet. Um, and uh, with regards to the role and of, of the, the chair and vice chair, um, I think those are excellent conversations. You know, we did provide, you know, kind of the committee bylaws a little later in the agenda, but the specific roles of the chair and vice chair are not, are, are, are not within that document. Um, it just basically says we have to elect one. Okay. Um, so we can we can define those when we get to that item if you like. Yes, I would. Thank you. Daya. Hi, Doug. Thank you. Um, I just want to echo Crystal and Elise's comments. I, I think one other um, process that I would like to bring into this conversation is certainly the AQCC roadmap planning, which should go. As, from, as far as I understand, um, will be presented at some point in the fall, which again, timing wise, really influences what the role of this committee is when we think about reaching our climate goals, not only in the front range, but potentially statewide. So just wanna lift that process up as well. Thank you, Daya. Right. So, uh, one of the things that I'm concerned about because I'm supposedly focused on financial issues is what's the mechanism through which we all get access online, hopefully, to all of the kinds of information that we need. And every person on this committee is gonna need different kinds of information. It would be good if there were a clear process rather than just having everybody uh, going out that we can sort of consolidate what it is we need from each of our individual issues and the things that we hope to contribute to this and then be able to get going on this because the schedule of this committee is, is uh, we got a lot to do in a short period of time. Definitely so, and that's a great point. Someone speak, Matthew? Oh, yeah, um, so uh, Dr. Cog's staff and RTD staff have already had conversations about this and RTD is going to make available uh, the documents that we need. Uh, there's going to be a, a place on the, on the web uh, so that uh, everyone can, can access them. Well, my concern is that there may be documents that we want that aren't the documents that RTD and Dr. Cog are planning to provide. So we need a mechanism through which we can request things outside of just what the normal flow of documents might be. And there's there's an agreement of... Go ahead, Go ahead. Matt. Oh, there, there's an agreement uh, that's about to be executed uh, between RTD and Dr. Cog uh, that uh, allows for that, allows for the committee to request additional documents that maybe weren't anticipated, and RTD uh, is going to get those documents to us as, as soon as they can, uh, and uh, 
uh, it, or if they if they're not able to get it, um, there they can offer alternatives or um, tell us how long it's going to going to take to get those documents uh, and make them available. But but we're the ones that need to drive that process to a large degree. There may be things that we want that aren't necessarily in the package that they put together. It's my only observation about that. So oh, and, and you're right, Rod. I think you know as we as we start hitting um, the various topics um, that we're required to hit, um, if collectively there are documents that we we would like to have from RTD, um, Dr. Cog's staff will pursue those for the for, for the committee. Right. right. Yes. Uh, Commissioner Jones, did you have another comment? I just wanted to underscore the importance of what Rut just said. I think in particular, some of the financial questions that we might have, I think Angie pointed out, RDD has been audited many times. It's not an issue of the information not being available, but the information is not um, in the form that we needed answering the questions that we'll probably have that maybe RTD has never had a reason to provide before. So we may be asking RTD to do some work in compiling numbers and maybe we'll probably need Dr. Cog's staff to help them see the importance and urgency of that. Gotcha. Any other comments or questions right now? I, again, you know, Elise, you're so smart. I want to echo the comments regarding reimagine RTD. No, I think it is, a, you know, a number of us that are on this committee also are sitting on this reimagine RTD. And so I think the interplay and role between the two of those is going to be really important. And then another piece of this, one of the most effective reviews we've, we've done in the city of Lone Tree was with um, one of our departments that not only that looked at kind of the internal organization and structure within not, not, the, not the governance level, but the management um, organization. And I guess that's one of the questions and comments that I've heard uh, from residents and, and stakeholders is, and it's a tough thing to say, but you know, is there is the admin side of the house a little too heavy? Uh, and is there opportunity there for um, some some budget reductions? Um, so, I mean, that's harsh, but I think that's an important part of what we're going to be looking at too. It's not just the efficiency of running the train, but the internal. How can we uh, achieve the most with the most talented people, but uh, keep it as lean as possible on the admin side of the house as well? Thank you, Mayor, very much. Thank you, Mayor. Other comments? Okay. All right. I have one other one. Sorry. Go ahead. Uh, keep piping up. Um, the we might be forming subcommittees to work on this, and I'm wondering if it's uh, an option to have those subcommittees tap into subject matter expertise that might, li might lie outside this committee to help us answer certain things and dive deep. If that's something that, I, I, it sounds like we get to control our own destiny. So I think it's probably up to this group, but I think we may want to to, to tap into the many resources that exist in, um, in this area. No, definitely commissioner. And I, I, I anticipate that that would be the case. Okay. The comments right now? Uh, one more. <laughs> yes, go ahead. Um, do we have anyone um, on this call or that we can help us in our charge? I, my goal and interest is to create the most um, equitable, inclusive committee structure. Um, you know, I have been chair, vice chair, and just part of several committees, and I've seen how that can be a tool to limit the type of information or expand the type of information and dialogue that we have. So my interest is um, to be able to preserve our equal opportunity from you know all of our different perspectives to have our ideas vetted out and discussed um, in a very public forum. Um, so I don't know, you know, I've been I was trying to do some research on what um, you know the most transparent and equitable processes and structure look like. And I'm not sure there's a clear answer, um, but if, if there isn't anybody who can help any singular person, I just wanted to kind of bring that top of mind for everyone, because again, I think we're all clear that we have a lot of work to do. And at the very minimum, we have to elect a few positions today, but it doesn't sound like we have to determine the full structure quite yet, but you know, in the interest of time, perhaps quite soon. Councilmember, thank you very much. That was, that's, those are 
are uh, certainly very pertinent comments. Um, and quite frankly, it's a pretty good bridge to a conversation about the committee guidelines. So <laughs> I, I know the next on the agenda talks about the election of chair and vice chair, but given the, the comments that the, that the council member made, um, it might be a good opportunity for us to maybe have a conversation about the accountability uh, committee guidelines before we elect chair and vice chair. It may uh, may influence whether you would want to seek that one of those positions or not. So if it pleases the group, um, we might just go to agenda item number six, which is the RTD accountability committee guidelines. Is that okay with everybody? Uh, thumbs up, yep. Okay, good. So let me get to it real quick. Um, Melinda, I, I don't know if you can move ahead in the agenda to get us to um, action item number six, agenda item six, committee yeah. guidelines. Okay, um, just real quick on this. I, I know you guys have hopefully you had an opportunity to just uh, give this a quick review. Um, if there's one thing that Dr. Cog likes is process. And uh, those who had any experience with Dr. Cog know what I'm talking about. And um, you know, developing a, a committee guidelines or bylaws or something of that nature is very comfortable to us. And all of our committees are in this similar format that we provided to you as an attachment to this agenda item. Um, and really, it, it just kind of basically it puts in our framework kind of what the proposal for the formation of this of this committee, um, um, you know, what it is it talks about the membership and of course the responsibilities and what should be in that in in the report um i did have a couple open open questions for you guys i think most of that that i just mentioned is pretty formulaic and like i said it was more of a copy and paste in from from the original proposal um the council member made a, some very very good com comments with regards to what the uh and maybe we should have some conversation about what the role of the officers of this committee are is as well as maybe some some um, some verbiage in the bylaws or gu committee guidelines associated with um, you know equitable voice with amongst committee members to make sure that every voice is being heard. I think those are excellent comments, and we as staff can work those in in um, in future versions of this if you prefer. Um, but I did have a question about um, quorum and voting. Um, those are on the. The I guess the second page of the of the committee guidelines um, we we have as a placeholder in here right now there it is right at the bottom of the page um, uh, we have as a placeholder uh, a quorum for the transaction of RTD accountability business shall be two thirds of its members uh, which would be it's, it's an eleven member committee um, so that would be eight members a quorum. Uh, would require eight members and then voting as a, again as a placeholder we just have a majority of those present in voting shall decide any question brought before the meeting so i i would just throw it open to to the group to kind of have a conversation about those two items specifically and we can get to some resolution on that then we can have a conversation about the other members that uh, council member murillo had uh, had mentioned any comments suggestions on quorum or voting Yes, right. One observation about quorum is that if three people are, are absent then from a meeting, you know, that's if four people are absent from the meeting, then we're basically below a quorum. It's a little tight. But uh, the other question, if you're talking about voting, are ex officio members voters? Because sometimes you have board observers in corporations and you may have. You know the 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 role of an ex officio is a little less than totally clear. Yes, it, that, that, thank point. you, Rod. I, I, yeah, I'll just answer that one question on the ex officio. No, the 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 two RTD ex officio members are not voting on on this committee. Okay. Yeah. Um. I, I, I get on the on the quorum, Rod. Right? Um. I yeah. I mean, when I wrote that, I was like, oh, gee whiz, eight of eight of eleven. That seems like a lot. Um. But I would suggest it doesn't mean we couldn't have a meeting. We just couldn't act upon. Um, you know, action items, actionable items, of course. Um, right. And it just seems that if um, you know some of some of the some of the conversations that we're going to have and the actionable items, it, I, I think it would be important to have as many members present and voting to get that consensus of the entire group. That was my only thought on that. Commissioner Jones, and, Crystal, were you going first? No, please go ahead. 
Well, I, I actually am interested in hearing what Crystal would have to say and others on, if we were looking at this through an equity lens, what does that, that lead us to with regards to quorum and voting? Um, mm -hmm. But my own comment on that is, I, when I was chair of Dr. Cog, one of the, one of my best moments in that role was when we got unanimous adoption of the Metro Vision, meaning everybody there voted for it and it took a whole lot of work. And I don't, that's a really high bar and I'm not suggesting that this committee acts um, to try to achieve that, but I'm wondering if something higher than just a majority on our final recommendations wouldn't um, facilitate greater buy-in and greater equity, but um, I'd love to hear, Crystal, what you think um, on those issues. Yeah, um, thanks, Elise. Uh, and I have a couple of thoughts, but first, um, I just wanted to propose on on the equity of, in voting. I mean, it has been my experience that um, people vote electronically. I, I too think, um, you know, we all have very busy schedules. We all have different commitments and we're prioritizing this committee. Um, but that doesn't mean that things don't come up. So I, I would love to hear, and we'll just throw out um, the potential of, of course, having a quorum, but even alternatively soliciting votes um, electronically. Again, as much buy-in and, and like, you, if potential unanimity, not certain, who knows, but um, ability to get as much buy-in and collaboration within the group. Um, that would be my thoughts um, on the voting piece, um, as well as um, if we accomplish some threshold, um, the potential to have a dissenting um, voice, if that is in fact the case. I think that is, um, that is the most transparent way to move forward. It, you know, a decision's a decision, but people should be able to, um, in the record, you know, propose why they may or may not agree with a particular recommendation. So I, I think that answers your your question, Elise. Um, and that those are my thoughts there. So thank you. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Kathy, go ahead. I I assume that we'll be able to use proxy um, for voting, and I agree. Um, I like the electronic piece just because it's very hard to get us all together, um, and I would just support having proxy. Thank you. Yeah, I was going to bring I'd, up. I'd like to proxy, support Kathy. both the electronic, the electronic piece, and also the idea of a dissenting opinion, opinion entered into the record, mm -hmm. so that all sides are are seen and heard. Great, thank you, Rod. Uh, Sophie, I think I saw your hand up. Yeah, I, I will echo what everyone else just said about electronic voting. And I was going to say that if we're recording these meetings, that's a great way for people who weren't able to make the meeting to listen to the discussion and then submit their vote electronically. So I think that is a great idea. Great. Thank you, Sophie. Hey, for the record, we are recording these meetings, aren't we, Melinda? Sorry, I was muted. Yes, that is correct. Okay. So you, probably Doug, should, you probably should Doug. know that anyway. Uh, Mayor, uh, yes. Uh, just to, to move it forward then a little bit, I, I am very comfortable with the proposal that was sent out regarding the quorum and voting. I think um, I think the fact that we are able to hold virtual meetings makes it easier for us to achieve that high bar for the quorum um, and that we can participate virtually even, I'm assuming at some point in the next year, I'm praying that we're going to be in a place where we maybe can all be have the ability to convene together. But if we can't, um, I, I do think the flexibility offered through virtual meetings is important, and I think we'll certainly facilitate being able to get that quorum and voting. So to the original question, I guess, and to throw it out there for debate, I am comfortable with the language proposed and would love, and I appreciate all of the other um, uh, kind of clarity provided uh, uh, by the other members uh, as well. But wondering, do you want to see that in this language? Do you want to see that added or is this okay for right now? And I guess I'm comfortable with the way it stands and we recognize the rules that we're all going to um, uh, kind of agree to, operational rules. Uh, I, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty sure, Mayor, um, that was an open question to the, to the full group, right? With regards right. to- Yes, 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 yes. yes. That. I want people to react. I was like, your question to us, I'm like, yes, this looks good and I love the, the um, depth that was provided by the di discussion dialogue, but I think I'm okay with it as written. 
I am. I am too. I think we can adopt it as written with the understanding that we may amend it to add some of the things we talked about here at the next meeting. Well, I, may I suggest this? Um, you know, because I do like, I, and I do believe there should be some information here about proxy voting and uh, the, the the method of voting electronically as an offer and all that kind of good stuff. So, if in theory, I mean. I, you know, I don't think it requires an action today. I think you, for the most part, you're okay with the way that the, this is formulated and everything. If we can add the, addition, the additional information and bring that back to you at the next meeting and get a quick okay on that, I, I, that's maybe the best approach. That sound good, Commissioner? I, I, I'm, I'm fine with that. I do think it's helpful to put in writing the points that we just made and there were yes. good ones. A dissenting um, uh, statement, proxy voting, electronic voting, and I would just like the, even when we go back to normal operations, we don't know when that is, I think the ability to um, participate virtually should be um, retained for anybody who might feel like they're at higher risk or not comfortable coming back. Sometimes in bylaws, that's not clear that we're allowed to meet electronically. Obviously, these are different times, but I think that should be explicit as well throughout this process that you have the right to participate electronically. Thank you, Commissioner. We'll include that as well. Ron Papstor. Thanks, Doug. Uh, good morning again, everyone. Um, I did have a clarifying question about electronic voting, just so we can make sure that we're serving the interests and the desire of the committee. Um, meeting virtually, we're sort of electronically voting. We're not voting in person. Um, so I'd like to understand what it specifically is meant by electronic voting. Does that mean voting by email, how long would the committee want to hold votes open before we sort of close the voting? Some some particulars, just so we know what your expectations are and can meet your needs. Great question. Anybody have a comments on that suggestion? I think clarity is always a good thing. Um, <laughs> uh, I think when, when I proposed electronic voting, I um, I did mean via email. Perhaps there are other uh, iterations of that that I'm not familiar with that I would be open to. But again, ease of sharing a vote and giving opinion. Um, I don't have any personally. Don't have any strong feelings on how long that should be open. Potentially a week would give some folks to review the recording. I guess I don't know how quick of a turnaround the recording or if it's available instantly. I know it does take our staff some time here in the city of Aurora to turn around um, our publicly recorded meetings and then share them ultimately onto the website. So I want to respect that there may be some turnaround time on, on staff's side. Yeah, very good. Yeah, I think we, we try to turn it around. Melinda, this might be a question for you. Within 24 hours, we try to get it posted, um, our meeting. So if it takes a little longer, I'm, you know, I think maybe three to five days it might be appropriate for to leave a vote open um, so that we have some clarity and closure on an item. Um, I think that would be great. But we'll work some language in and let you guys have a look at it at the next meeting. Uh, any other? Is everybody okay with that idea about electronic voting? I think it's it's we're really talking about email voting more than anything else. Yep, we got a thumbs up. Good. All right, great. Thank you very much. So I, I would like to just, again, um, Council Member Murray, I'm, I'm going to butcher your name, Crystal, all the time. And I apologize so, so much on that. Um, Murillo. Murillo. <laughs> I can roll my, I can roll him. There you go. Um, uh, with regards to the actual you know, responsibilities of the officers, um, I would suggest, if nothing else, I, I think it was our hope that we could work with the chair and vice chair in agenda setting. Um, and obviously, you know, control and facilitation of the meeting. But if there are other other responsibilities that the committee would be interested in the chair and vice chair having, um, I'd be happy to hear those and, and write them into the guidelines. I don't have so much as a recommendation on their specific role, but I guess more of the relationship between the two, right? I guess I'm clear on the basics so that you know, if the chair is unavailable, the vice chair kind of assumes that role. But is there, you know, who is it the chair and the vice chair that set the agenda? Is it just the chair? 
um, what is, you know, what, what does that complementary role look like? Or do you have any suggestions? Well, um, Council Member, my suggestion would be both of those officers would be involved in the agenda setting. Um, it kind of mirrors our executive committee at Dr. Cog. The, the full executive committee um, has that responsibility in, in assisting staff in developing the agenda. So I think more, more voices, the better in something like that. So just to add some color to that, Doug, then if it is similar to Dr. Cog, then the vice chair, the chair, and the Dr. Cog staff would have a, a short meeting bef before the meeting to sort of set the agenda and talk through it sort of in consensus fashion. Yes, that's our hope. Envisioning. Okay. So an, an, an agenda setting meeting, um, are those publicly going to be public? Those, so, those uh, uh, meetings? Sure. I mean, all of our member, all of our meetings, uh, Dr. Cog meetings are open to the public, including our executive committee meetings. So, um, if that's the desire of this committee, yes, we can do that. I would be and okay would, with that. And I would imagine, I, I would as well. But I would imagine um, there has been some conversation about some subcommittees that may be forming, and I would assume that they would also be influencing the agenda while not participating in the meeting, but sending things up through the subcommittees. You know offering things up to the chair and vice chair and to the staff to, to say, you know, we're, we're ready for prime time. Let's put this on the meeting agenda too. So I see it and maybe uh, because of the experience at Dr. Cog, a, a very collaborative process, regardless of who's the chair or vice chair, you're going to probably hear from all of us <laughs> on what we think should be on an agenda and when we're ready to cover something. And I think we'll effectively work well together. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Mayor. Any other comments on on that? Um, yeah, I, I, and we'll work those responsibilities into into the next version that you see. Okay, um, so this does not require a vote today, um, but we will bring back a, a later version, and hopefully we can get the get an action uh, at that appropriate time. Um, so that now takes uh, any Doug, other questions? Any additional questions? Yes, please. Public public comment. Yes. When is that Let's happening? Talk about that. What, is it happening every meeting? Would do, does uh, the Dr. Cog staff have a, a recommendation on that? I didn't. I don't recall seeing one. No, uh, we we didn't. Um, and actually, that is something we did want to talk about. And thank you for reminding me because I had totally forgot. Um, so on all uh, all of our Dr. Cog meetings, as you know, Commissioner, um, we have a public comment period. Um, and I just wanted to ask this committee what the, what their opinions might be on that or whether we have i don't know how often we're planning on meeting or maybe we have monthly a monthly meeting in which there's more opportunity for public comment the reason why i mean i you know an item such as this i'm sure there could be the potential for a lot of public comment um and whether we do that specifically during the meetings or offer some other venue to do that um, I just throw that that idea out. I think we're just a little concerned about how long the meeting might go in some cases. But that, you know, but I mean, if you guys are comfortable, we're certainly comfortable. Ron, did you have a, I, know, I saw you popped in. Do you have another comment? Sorry, I, I just, to, just to remind the committee members that kind of under the, under the charter of the committee, there is, a, there's the minimum requirement is public hearing, public hearing, probably plural, on recommendations that the committee is considering to bring forward. Um, so that's the minimum. I think the, the question here is, do you want sort of a formal public comment agenda item on each meeting agenda? And just reinforcing Doug's point, the, the question there is just, you know, are, are, your meet, are your regular meetings sort of working committee meetings um, or do you want public comment at, at each of those meetings? And I think that's just, that's just a question for the committee to, to consider and decide. Uh, Rod and then Jackie. My only observation is that if we have public comment during the meetings, those meetings can be very long. And then you have to be selective about what it is that is the comment that you address, or do you let anyone engage in the middle of the meeting? Uh, one other alternative is to post the minutes of our meetings and then allow for public comment on those minutes and then discuss those comments at the next meeting. That way it, it isn't quite as disruptive to the flow of the actual meetings. It's a good idea, right? Uh, Mayor. 
So I, I guess I, I'm obviously very familiar with the way uh, the council meetings are structured. So our work sessions, we do, since we do not make decisions, we do not have a public comment period. Um, so to me, uh, kind of Ron alluded to it, is that we have a public hearing and a comment, the public comment on any recommend on any votes and recommendations that we're going to be taking. We would always welcome written comment um, at at any point, but not in our work sessions not have the public comment period, but obviously be fully transparent, make sure that information is available and people always have the opportunity to react to it. The other thing I might add, and I don't know how everyone else feels about it, but Lone Tree, we are not reading written public comment into the record, but we are committed to reading every single one of those comments individually as elected officials. But to spend the time to read it into the record is not an efficient, we have decided is not an efficient use of our time. So I would like to have that practice as well um, here. So just love to get everyone's reaction to no public comment in work sessions, but if we are going to be making a decision on something, have a public hearing and allow for comment then. Okay. Questions, comments, uh, reaction to Jackie's uh, idea or Rutz? Um, I, I, I want to just add a little asterisk. I would love to, I think we're balancing the, our ability to maintain this commitment uh, as committee members. So definitely want to honor that. If any of you guys have seen Aurora City Council members, you know that we um, have a lot of public comment and I, I don't want to be dismissive of, and, and not that that was a proposal. Um, I would be okay with a short public comment period during our work sessions. That's just my thought, maybe limit it to 20, 30 minutes. I think it's always important to center our work around our constituents. Um, and I think that's a really direct line to, to be able to do that. That's just personally how I feel about it. I'm okay with deferring to the majority will on this, on the topic. Um, I do like the uh, posting meeting minutes as well and having comment available there. Um, just, you know, as much opportunity, this is a really important conversation. And I think people either don't like it's just not in the periphery or it, they just feel really strongly about it like there's i guess there's a handful of issues in local government that you just get <laughs> such really strong comments on and transit tends to be one of them um in my district and, and in aurora um so that i guess my proposal would be a 30 minute public comment period during our work sessions and then the rest of the suggestions made by Ra and and jackie great thank you very much council member Gaya. Yeah, I agree with Crystal, and this is borrowing from the um, the RTD PASS program working group, which was very different than the reimagined RTD process. And I feel that by having this very short public period, you know, we were able to take that into our own thinking and our own conversations, even in the working session. So I agree with Crystal, even a very short amount of public comment period could be really helpful for this group. But time bound, um, I would be more than open for that. Great, thank you. So if, and having not had that experience, can you just help me understand? So if you limit the, the time and there are people that want to speak, are they not allowed to speak at that meeting then? I guess that's where I was concerned. I would, we will always, I mean, as elected officials, those of us who are elected officials, we always take public comment, right? I take it at the grocery store. I take it up when I'm out walking. I get public comment all the time. So, uh, but I understand the difference between public comment going into the record and, and you know, as part of the process. And I, I absolutely want to encourage that, which is why I was suggesting when we take a vote, how is it handled? If you have more people, because I remember at Dr. Cog, I mean, so the, the I-70 hearing, I remember I was chairing it at that point and, you know, a lot of people with a lot of very strong and helpful opinions on that. So we would we would hold it for a certain period of time, then start our meeting and then go back to public comment at the end of our meeting to make sure everybody had the opportunity to be heard, which ended up being some very, very late evenings. So I'm not part so and if we're not making a decision, I don't feel as strongly that because it, there isn't that it's not imminent. Time is not imminent in that case because we're not making a decision that night. So I guess that's where I'm coming from. How, how does it work, ladies? Uh, can I, I, I know Council, Council Member Mullico wanted to get in and then Commissioner oh, Jones. Sorry. Julie, you're cut off on my screen. I got to get rid of this thing. I can't see what I'm <laughs> There. All right. There. Wait, now um, I have your face. 
Oh, okay. So anyway, I wanted to agree with Crystal as well and uh, Danea, and I think that I, one of the things, because we don't typically do public comment in our work sessions either, um, so it is going to be something new for me, but it is something that I think could be really helpful in making sure that we're getting um, opportunity for people to speak their mind and, and, and share with us their concerns, because those stories are so important to how we should be conducting our business. Um, and so I, I do agree with that. Um, I think Jackie brings up some great points of how do we actually have a working meeting that, you know, is, is functional and doesn't go until the night every single night. Um, I think that that's very important. And I'd love to hear what Crystal has to say, because um, like I said, in my city council, we don't do um, public comment in work sessions, although um, I, I think it actually would be a great opportunity to continue to to hear um, from those from those residents. So, um, Jack, uh, Crystal, what, what what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, uh, thank you. So, um, you know, I, I'm definitely open to what the Dr. Cog staff and have have in terms of uh, recommendation. I mean, really, it is um, in in Aurora and you know in in other experiences that I've seen. You can have a time cut off. You know, by this time, you've had to submit your comments. And then, you know, up until this 30 minute time frame, that, that's just a public comment. I think being clear, like there's just no, I think one simple solution to, to making sure that this is the smoothest process. But what I've seen be done effectively is communicating when there, if and when there is a cutoff time to submit public comment um, and being clear that there is, you know, we have three minutes max per constituent. So we could um, direct um, constituent comments to be less than two or three minutes. Um, and then that way we can, you know, maximize that 30 minute time frame. Um, and it's first come first serve. Um, I'm not sure there's a better way to do that, but though, you know, that's been kind of the structure that we use, we've used. Council member, I, I know uh, Commissioner Jones wants to get in here. Uh, I just might throw out, um, Commissioner, I'd be interested to get your take on this too, that if you were to limit public comment, I hate the word limit, limit public <laughs> comment to um, uh, to agenda topics, to agenda items that are items that are on that specific agenda, for example, that might kind of narrow and filter down the conversation, provide you with you know very useful and immediate feedback to, to items. Um, it's just a suggestion, Commissioner Jones. So I'd like to agree with uh, Crystal and Dea and Julie in that I think it is important because this is such a um, public topic that our, our constituents care about to provide an outlet for ongoing um, input from the public. And I would distinguish that from our public hearings around uh, our final recommendation. And the way we do it, uh, county commissioners have a monthly public comment period where anybody can come and show up and we set aside 30 minutes. And when that 30 minutes is up, you know, and it, it is first come first serve. I know the city of Boulder does that before their meetings. Um, they have in the past done a lottery. You sign up online and they, they randomly pick. I mean, you can set it up a couple of different ways. So I do think it, it is useful to have people just voice, you know, it helps us ground our conversation for the meeting in a bit of reality from our constituents. Um, and I, I think we should figure out how often we meet to figure out what's the appropriate time. Is it 30 minutes? Is it 20 minutes? Wh what it is, because we do, I think the, the work of this committee is so important and so urgent, we're gonna, we have a lot to get done. So we just have to figure out that balancing mechanism. And I think we can do it through online signups um, to try to make it um, equitable so that um, people can, can find us and, and have a, an opportunity to, to speak to us. Thank you, Commissioner. Um, I think we heard you know, we heard quite a bit. I, I, as staff, let us let us take that all that we've heard today and, and bring something back to you guys and and see if we we've hit the mark or not. But um, but I, I think our takeaway is here. Yes, public comment is obviously very important, and if we can insert that at the appropriate places for the the appropriate length of time during our agendas, that would be a good idea. So we'll take that back and present something back to you at our next meeting. Great, thank you all so very, very much. Um, so that takes us to uh, our agenda item, um, the election of chair and vice chair. Uh, so who wants to do more work? Which one of you? Um, no, but thank you very much. So we, we, um, I'd be interested to, you know, I'd, be, I'd just throw it on the floor. Anybody who's interested in um, being the chair and vice chair, you can recommend yourself or recommend others. 
um, particularly those that are not here today. Though that, that's always the best way. And, uh, and then we'll vote on that. <laughs> <laughs> so who has interest? Uh, uh, I just say I'm interested. Uh, I think there was, I didn't know if we were speaking or raising hands, but I saw Julie also, Elise and Brett. Great. So who? Well, we I'll go first. Um, I am really interested in nominating somebody. <laughs> um, I'd really like to nominate Elise Jones. I think that she's just been a giant um, and proven leader in this conversation. Um, and we would be very, very lucky to have her as chair. So I would like to nominate Elise Jones as chair. And, and I would I'd second, like second it. it. And, and also, uh, I may have an interest, but it would only be as vice chair, not as chair. I have, I'm retired now and I have time to put in to help subcommittees doing research and things like that. And I, I'll volunteer that time. Okay, so let's do this. Let's take them one at a time then. Um, so we do have a nomination on the floor and that was seconded. Uh, the, the, I seconded the nomination. it. J Jackie did, okay. So, yeah. uh, so the, the motion, I, I, was that in the form of a motion or is just a nomination right now, Julie? God, I, you talk about process again. It was just a nomination. That. Okay, as a nomination, we have Elise Jones, and um, Elise, I would assume you would accept that. If I was just raising my hand to say I'm willing to serve in whatever capacity would be useful to this committee, because I'm deeply committed to its outcome. So okay, if sweet. if that's chair, great. If it's vice chair, it's great. If it's neither, that's that's fine too. Great. Thank and you, Elise. I, I would like to speak to your nomination, having had the privilege of serving uh, for a number of years with Elise down at Dr. Cog and seen her run the meetings and seen um, how well she balances competing interests and dialogue and uh, advocacy. I, I would strongly advocate whatever the appropriate word is to or make a motion for you. I recognize others may be interested, but, you know, uh, I. I think Elise is a tremendously talented individual and a, and a great, um, I think, advocate and and passion and equity and just um, I think she would do a tremendous job. So thank that's you, Mayor, very up. much. Are there any other nominations? Um, yes, Elise. Well, I heard Crystal saying she was interested, and I sort of heard Rut too. Um, I so. I want to I want to be open to to hearing that. Um, and, and Crystal, I, I think in particular your your strong voice on equity, and um, so it could be that it would be appropriate to have you in a leadership role to to make sure that that's given full voice. And uh, if that's again right, you had indicated an interest too. So, um, but I, I I do th I feel like that's an important voice in this discussion. So I guess I'm leaning towards. Uh, suggesting and nominating you as well, either for chair or vice chair, however you want to do that. I just want to have that conversation and make sure we heard that. Thank you. I appreciate that, Elise. Um, yeah, I, I am interested in serving in a leadership capacity as well. I have interest in chair and vice chair. I am, again, happy to defer to what the group wants. Um, I, I think I've expressed my interest in making sure that this is um, operated in an equitable way, that we have equal opportunity to voice a pro or um, uh, opposite or against um, stance on issues. You know, I, I really, you know, think that that's important. Um, I believe in convening the marketplace of ideas, right? That there isn't a wrong way here. Um, I, I definitely have time and capacity uh, to be able to take on a leadership role. Um, in fact, I have even tapped in our own City of Aurora staff. Um, mm -hmm. Luke Palmasano being on this call as an attendee, um, just to get further clarity on capacity and the city of Aurora in conjunction with Dr. Cog, if needed, if needed, um, would be able to support the agenda setting process. So just want to let you know that I am interested in either or. Um, I would love to serve with you, Elise, um, and anyone else who's interested in a leadership position, but um, I do I have strong feelings about good process. Um, and I think that's what we're really looking for when we think of chair and vice chair. Great, thank you, Crystal, very much. Kathy, I see your hand raised and then Daya. <clears throat> yeah, and I am new to this um, topic. So um, obviously I, my kids use RTV, et cetera. So I have a different point of view. 
um, from a, a consumer perspective, I think it would be important for us to have um, a broad, or from our leadership perspective, to have not, I don't wanna say new faces, but I don't want the public to perceive that it's more of the same. I really think that it's important for um, the public to understand that we have a group of individuals who bring a variety of different topics and, and expertise. But what I don't want is for them to think that this is another whatever, fill in the, fill in the blank in terms of what they've seen. So if we can demonstrate that in terms of um, our, our chair and vice chair, I think that would be helpful. I don't know um, any of you, well, I know, I know uh, Jackie, but um, for the vast majority of you, I don't really know you, so I don't know what the reputation is there, but I would just ask that we take that into consideration so that people feel like it is a fresh new perspective for whatever that's worth. And I don't, I don't, I want to also say, I echo Crystal's perspective in terms of equity, et cetera. Um, I'm always um, the voice of reason when it comes to all of that. So I don't think that there would be a problem in any of us raising those concerns um, as we look forward into the, the work that we're getting ready to do. So I'll just stop there. I just want to make sure that my, my thoughts and perspective were voiced. Great. Thank you, Kathy, very much. Daya, then Rutt. Yeah, so I would second Crystal's nomination. While I personally have not had the chance to work with her, um, I certainly know many folks within the Mile High Connects network that have had really deep relationships with Crystal um, from a housing perspective. So I think to Kathy's point, that balance of who is new to this conversation but still has some familiarity or some understanding of how transportation is affecting their community, um, I can speak to to just the relationship that our our community organizers and community resident leaders have had in working with Crystal. So I would second her nomination. Great. Thank you, Dave. Dave, very much. Rut. Yeah, I, I'd like to say that as, as far as the vice chair thing goes, I'm not particularly eager. I think it's better if there is a, a diversity uh, in in that. And, and furthermore, I also want to emphasize that I'm eager to provide support in a research capacity for any of the subcommittees. It's uh, something I've done a lot of in my life. <laughs> yes, you have. Thank you, sir, very much. Okay, so, so we... Hey, so, the, the only thing I want to yes, add is I actually don't, I, I actually think it'd be worthwhile to not just have it be elected in the chair and vice chair role. I think it, to speaking to the diversity, I think diversity on this committee and take advantage of not just the elected officials, but the... It, it, there were different categories brought to the table for a reason, so that that would be my only comment. Is and I think I think um, all of the candidates are qualified and would do a, a great job. I, I have not had the opportunity to really work with Crystal. I think we've been on a I think I've been in the room with Crystal, but I haven't had a chance to work with her. And so um, so I'm sure, and I know Kathy would do an excellent job as well. So I think we've got really good people. Sophie, excellent. I see you. Thank you, Mayor, very much. Sophie. Yeah. No. I I'm very happy with all of the candidates on the table. I did want to just mention sort of the elephant in the room that we haven't talked about too much, which is COVID. And I think that that's going to be uh, deeply impactful to especially essential workers. And so, you know, not that equity was not on anyone's minds here, but I do think that that's going to be a really important piece of how we sort of think about how the system is impacting people in the short run and the long term. And so, I really do want to see that voice in our, our leadership group. And again, I think we, we have that of all the candidates, but I wanted to mention it. Great. Thank you, Sophie, very much. Okay. So as best that I can tell, there are really two nominees that we have for, for chair, and that's Elise Jones and Crystal Marrero. Marrero. Mario. Rio. You okay. got you to gotta learn how to say that, Doug. I know. It's the Canadian in me. I don't know. I, I <laughs> well, you don't get to blame Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, yeah, th those are the two we have on the table, I think, for chair. Um, and well, I don't know. Okay, I think Kathy. I mean, Kathy, are you interested in chair too, or no? Mm -hmm. No. Okay. <laughs> I just want to make sure. No. I, no. My, no. Mm -mm. Okay. Okay. So. So I have it. I have it right right now. Um, God, typically, I don't even know how to do this virtually. Typically, we would just do. Uh, you know, silent hey, vote. Chris Frampton is trying to get back into the call. He got kicked off. He just oh, he did. Hey, can someone let Chris in, Melinda? I feel like you're calling to someone in the next yeah. room. 
Can I just ask another question? Because I, again, I don't know um, any of you, but um, between uh, Elise and Crystal, um, what, what's the public perception of where you are on this topic? If you wouldn't mind just sharing that with me, I just want to make sure that whoever we choose chooses chair, that I'm I'm not shocked later. People are like, what did you do? She's the chair. Ah. So I, I'd like to go into it knowing um, if there is a political sentiment behind your interest or whatever. I just like to know that going in because I don't know you and I don't have time right now to Google you. <laughs> Who wants to go first? That's a fair question. I don't mind going first. Uh, Kathy, um, you're going to listen to a politician talking about their own <laughs> <laughs> reputation. So there's an asterisk there. Um, yeah. You know, I would say um, most most of my work is notably in the housing space, um, but that's only because I, I understand housing and its intersectionality with issues like transit, redevelopment, workforce, um, and just all of the things, right? It is certainly an intersection. And when it comes to um, RTD and public transit housing and, and, and access via public transit to work centers um, and the pressures that transit puts on redevelopment um, are at the core of, of where I'm coming from. I wouldn't say, I mean, you know, I, I haven't been the most vocal. Um, so, you know, to be fully transparent um, on specific RTD issues, just because housing is just the priority. Um, it just is so foundational, but I certainly am not dismissive to the role that it could have for a positive or negative impact in community. So um, it, it was one of my top three, uh, you know, uh, when you see like a political ad, politicians have their top three. Mine was housing, connected um, way of moving people, not just cars, you know, not just buses, but we were, we're really moving people, um, as well as um, equitable pay for um, our constituents. So that's, I guess that's a little bit about me, from me. Thank you. I'm sorry <laughs> to ask, but I'm, you'll know that I'm pretty- That's fair. <laughs> when I just, whatever's on my mind. All right, thank you, Elise. So I'm happy to, but I wanna first by saying, one of the things that we're trying to do in Boulder County right now is really center equity. And it makes me uncomfortable to think about our first action as this committee to have a vote for me versus Crystal. I don't like that. Um, and so I'm happy to defer to Crystal and to step down as a nomination, either you know try to serve as vice chair or to consider a co-chair collaborative leadership. But I just wanna throw that out to the group that I don't want this to be the first action we take um that doesn't feel right to me that i mean said if you want to know a little bit more about me i think um i'm most um known i've been a county commissioner for eight years and prior to that i ran a, a statewide conservation advocacy group so i'm known i think as a regional um thinker and collaborator um, particularly around the issues related to multimodal transportation um climate um i serve on the air quality control commission to help write uh, air quality and climate regulations. Um, and I, prior to that, served on the Regional Air Quality Council. I've chaired Dr. Cog, and I'm the Dr. Cog rep on the Statewide Transportation Advisory Committee. So um, while I'm from Boulder County in the Northwest Corridor, which has, again, a, a pretty strong foundation in multimodal transportation, climate, and, and affordable housing work, um, I, I really, believe in thinking regionally and what's best for the region and beyond. And that's the space that I'm probably best known for. Thank you. Thank you, Elise, very much. Okay. Um, wow. Can I, wait, okay. can I echo oh. my my support of the potential co-chair um, idea as well? I, again, I'm not trying to be a gatekeeper. Um, I believe in, you know, diverse leadership. Um, and since we get to decide the structure, do we have to have a chair and a vice chair? I mean, feels very hierarchical, which as a millennial, I'm okay with that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's not any extra stone. It wasn't in legislation, like their statute. So we can, I, I think we have the, the luxury and the latitude to do whatever we want, to be honest okay. with you. Kristen, I know you had a comment. I'm really digging the idea of a co-chair. I'm, I'm thinking that that between the two of your fo fo hi, focuses, uh, <laughs> Sorry, uh, it's been a long time since I was in college in the English class. Uh, <laughs> and I'm not a millennial. But anyway, um, I, I really think that the two of you would work great together as far as 
helming what this group does. Right. And that's I, what I'll, we need. We need two you, guides. I, I know we're we're getting a lot of head nods on that. Um, I think I would, you know, at this time, if it pleases the group, I'd I'd entertain a motion. So moved. We have a motion for uh, Ooh, second. I want a second. Okay, we got a second. Rich, you got back. You got back in. <laughs> yes. Of a chair, uh, two co-chairs as, as opposed to a chair and vice chair. Um, so that's the proposal that's on the table. Are there any other comments before we vote? Okay, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Congratulations to both and thank uh, Commissioner you. Jones. Thank you to both of you for being Mario. willing to serve. That's it's a lot of work, but we appreciate you. It is. Crystal, you I look much. forward to working with you. This is going to be fun. <laughs> I'm I'm very excited. Thank you. Thank you everyone uh, for trusting us in our leadership, and I am looking forward to working with you all. Good stuff. So I know we're already over time, folks. Um, but I, we do have one agenda item that we wanted to just uh, get your get your opinion and hopefully action on. Um, Matthew Helfand, uh, this is action item number seven: uh, solicitation of an on-call consultant. Matthew, <laughs> do you want to just briefly uh, summarize this? Sure. So you you have it. You have a draft scope of work in your packets, but um, we're. We, we staff believe that we will likely need uh, an on-call uh, consultant uh, to, to help us out with this committee uh, to do research, maybe some facilitation. We're not sure exactly how that's gonna come up, but we, we have a feeling that it's going to come up. So uh, we'd like, uh, if, if, uh, if the committee agrees, we would like to A, uh, move forward, uh, and B, uh, have a subgroup to review the um, the applications the submittals thank you matthew very much i probably should turn this over to one of our co-chairs to probably facilitate this conversation um but but ultimately yeah i i think we had always hoped that and it was part of our, our initial budget um that we would hire um at least one on-call consultant and probably others to help us with uh you know, as was mentioned earlier, with some of the expertise that's going to be required as part of our deliberations. Um, so this is basically just this. Um, so the actual scope of work in there, um, it's again, it's a cut and paste job from the proposal itself, just talking about the areas of expertise we may need based on based on the the um, the, uh, the, uh, the work items that we're going to be exploring. Um, it's uh, so would be interested if you have any comments or suggestions on revisions to the to the uh, to the scope but um but yeah we re really would like to get going as quickly as possible and, uh, and get an rfp up sophie yeah two comments um the first being you talked a little bit about reimagine rtd and i want to make sure that um some of the effort that's already gone into that process uh is complementary to this i think some of this research has already been done by the consultant uh for reimagine rtd um and then second i i would be interested in serving on the subcommittee to review those applications Thank you, Sophie, very much. And I would like to recognize that the CDOT has offered um, expertise as part of this conversation as well. So, Sophie, thank you, and thank you to Director Liu for, for, the, for that offer. Uh, Commissioner Jones? Um, I, I wanted to, I support having Sophie on that committee. Um, <laughs> I wanted to add a, a bullet to the scope around um, looking at best practices um, from peer transit agencies. Um, in particular, those that have, have gone through transformative processes to improve their efficiency and, and examine their structure. And I, I think that that um, would be really helpful because we're not the first transit agency to um, walk this ground and uh, we don't need to completely reinvent the wheel. We can borrow good ideas. Great point, Lise. Right. The one thing I would say is that I would like to see it say included, include but not limited to because we don't really know yet all of the different areas that we may need outside consulting help. Very Small good. Point. Yep, no, it's a very uh, good point. We, we use the, uh, the words uh, any or all in, in front of there, but we can certainly change it, that's fine. Yeah, include additional language to make it more clear. Any other comments on the draft scope? Um, this is uh, Councilmember Murillo. The only thing, I, I'm not clear if this would be the charge of the consultant, but 
I guess um, being clear on like decision making points I, as they relate to RTD, which groups, which laws govern, um, you know, and which committees it sounds like there's the reimagine committee. I guess I'm not 100% sure if there are any outstanding groups that ultimately impact the decisions that RTD make. Um, and that maybe staff has, you know, that could be accomplished in a multiple multitude of ways. But I think being clear of the decision making process as a, as it impacts RTD. Council member, um, yeah, I, yeah, I, I'm, I, I agree, and I, I think it, you know, from the staff perspective, we'll make sure that there's, you know, that that interplay between all those other groups and that as well. I, I don't, I'm not sure it is necessary that it be within the scope itself. Um, but we'll make sure that that happens. <clears throat> Are there any other comments at this time? And you, um, if if there are others that are interested in serving on a little subcommittee to help vet uh, the the proposals that we get, we'd be happy to take those now. Or you can just reach out to staff um, over the next week or so um, once you once you get, had an opportunity to give it some thought. Uh, but Sophie, you're in. <laughs> uh, Hey, hey Doug, I don't want to belabor. I don't want to belabor this call, but it it would seem to me we are likely going to be creating subcommittees. And do you have a sense of? I mean, to me, the obvious are operational finance and governance, right? I mean, is that a fair statement? Does everybody kind of think that's where we may be heading? I so, I do. I think those are perfect, actually. Okay, so I guess in, it, just to keep that in mind as we look at the, the one on the on the uh, consultant review um, will be a short term one but I think those other three potentially are going to be the lo the longer one is is that the is that what the group is thinking I guess I'm just trying to understand as I look at the contribution and where I think I can be a best service trying to understand what space to be in is that I see Ron pop back in that means he's got something to say Ron what do you no, I think I think Mayor Valais right on point. Um, we're we're looking for a little bit of representation from committee members to help us review consultant proposals. I think that's a very short term, short duration event. Um, just to address some of the points, we kind of we want to get someone under contract that has sort of the right mix of expertise, so that as as you as as the committee decide what you want, some specific expertise, some uh, some specific sort of outside research capability to dig into a particular issue we have we have that we don't have to do a we don't have to do a selection process every time so we just want to get this get this ball rolling and then within sort of a very broad scope that we've presented here uh, and we'll refine you all will decide sort of what specifically you want the consultants help on as as your work continues throughout the year yeah great points ron thank you sir very much okay um just for time purposes, um, you know, I would entertain a motion to to approve this this draft scope of work um, with the bullet points that uh, Commissioner Jones made regarding best practices, looking at other transit agencies, um, that type of thing, as well as the comment that Rutt made um, about include but not limited to language. So moved. Second. Have a second. That was Crystal and Elise, right? Uh, any other comments? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, aye. same sign. Motion carries. Thank you all very much. Okay, that takes Three. us away from the actual items today. Um, we have a couple of administrative items, as we always do with Dr. Cog, Jackie. Uh, ah. Member comments and other matters. Uh, anybody have any additional comments or other matters they'd like to bring forth to the committee today? Are we going to set up a standing call? Yes, that's that's the next item. I think we're going to figure that out. Dan, did you have a comment, sir? Yes, I apologize. I have another meeting scheduled. Uh, can somebody let me know when the next meeting is going to be? Yes, sir, we will. Find me with any other information I need. It's been a pleasure. Very interesting. Uh, thank you all. Thanks, thank you Dan. Next time. Thanks, Dan. Bye -bye. I actually need to go as well, so I don't okay. know how we're, the process for setting up the meeting. Hey, you want to talk about that then, real quick? I think what we do, we'd like to get some kind of standing time, and you know, time of the month type of you know, whether it's every two weeks or I, I don't know how often you guys would like to meet, but I think this maybe time seems, 
seems Anything. to work. Um, yeah. If everybody was on, why don't we just try to shoot for the same time? And then if anybody can't, they'll let you know. So you want uh, to do twice it a, twice a month, I think makes sense. In the yeah. early time, I think that'd be that'd be wise. The second and fourth, second and fourth Let's Mondays is what we're looking yep. at. Yep. Okay. And that we do we have somebody send that out. We will. Yep. Perfect. That sounds great. Any other comments that anybody had before we go? Doug, this is Lynn. Yes, Lynn. Just quickly, I won't go through it now, but um, uh, except very briefly, but we have these three great finalists. We'll be doing a second round of interviews, our finalist interviews um, with the board on the 19th. We're asking all of them because we are so uh, hampered by the, the pandemic in terms we can't meet them. Um, we're asking all of them to do a 15 minute video and on the 19th after our interviews, we'll be posting those with a survey. We'll make sure to get that all out to you. And, and I'll just talk with Doug and his team when we can send out the process, but we certainly would, would like to get your feedback. Thanks. Thank you, Lynn, very much. Appreciate that. Anything else before I, we go? I just wanna highlight that. I think that is very important that this committee um, actively weighs in on the general manager decision. Obviously, we need to. They, RTD needs to move forward with that, so they can't slow it down for us. But I, I think it, it will play into everything that we do. So um, maybe staff can think about how to make that robust and and how we. You know, at least to, along those lines, because I think some a good number of us aren't familiar with the day to day things that are happening at RTD. So, and there's a lot going on. I mean, it's not just us. There's a new a new head and the reimagine thing. I don't know if there's some sort of good um, weekly or bi-weekly sort of news dump for us, but I, I do think it would be helpful. And obviously I can set up my Google accounts to sort of hit me every time a news paper article comes up or something, but there's also stuff that doesn't come through on that. So I'm not sure the best way to sort of continue to share that with us, but I think it would be really helpful. I think we can make that happen. Okay. Thank you, you very yeah. much. That's, that's, that's a big ask, so I don't wanna, yeah. It's a big ass. Somebody has to sit down and do it. So it doesn't well, just done. magically appear. It's done already, I think. So I think um, by and large, we can uh, add the committee into that. I'll talk to staff about that. Great. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Lynn, very much. Anything else? Matthew, did you have a quick comment? Just, um, just want to see if we can add maybe two or three other volunteers uh, to look over the, the um, RFP respondents. We, I see Kathy and Dea and Kristen all have their hands up. All right. I will add you, you to the list. Like <laughs> I'm always happy, happy to do it if you still need more, but otherwise I don't have to. Thank you, Lise. Okay. Well, thank you all very much. I think we, we found our way through through to the end of this virtual meeting. Um, I'm, I, I, we're really excited about this. So you can have a wonderful group and I'm looking forward to talking to you. If you ever have any questions or anything, feel more than comfortable reaching out to myself, Ron or Matthew. Um, we pride ourselves in our, you know, that interaction with our members. So please do that. And um, until next time, the fourth Monday, we, uh, we look forward to you. Elise and Crystal, we'll be reaching out to you guys specifically to have a conversation about the next agenda. But uh, thank you all very much and have a wonderful day. Thanks everybody. Bye. Bye. Kathy, oh, no. that thing has been, you've got to bring that coffee for all of us next time because that thing looks great. <laughs> <laughs> coffee, this is for my husband. Donuts. I want donuts. <laughs> We're adjourned. Thank you all. Bye. Bye. Have a great day. Bye.